Yo guys, what's up and welcome back to the Marvelous Chats. My name is Finto, I'm joined by Hoffman and Zaberwolf in this video, and we're going to talk about The Boys Episode 7. Uh, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you leave a follow on the channel, like the video, leave us a comment in the section below and let us know what you think of the episode. Guys, what do we think? Oh man, dude, I love The Boys. Like, this is the best superhero show on TV right now, blowing everything out from Disney+. Plus. And this episode just kind of kind of shows how a character like Black Noir that we really haven't deep dived all season long. Like they gave us a brief moment earlier in the season. They really don't give us that much throughout the whole series. And then all of a sudden, like you, they make him one of the most interesting characters in the whole series because he's going crazy. And he sees like this make believe Disney world around him of like animated cartoons. It's like it is this type of episode of the boys is the reason I love watching a show because they just throw you curveball after curveball. On like who's the actual interesting characters you should be paying attention to, and every time they kill one off or get rid of one, it's like here's another one with a great story that we can tell you. Yeah, exactly. It's so good. Like it's yeah. Just yeah. when you just when you think, oh, what like they've gotten rid of somebody interesting, maybe they won't be able to fill that gap. It's like, oh, by the way, Black Noir is amazing. <laughs> yes. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. What, what do you think, Alex? Uh, definitely was a fantastic episode. I think I felt like it was better than Hero Gasm because of all the introspective. Like Absolutely. there's so much deep diving. You know, not just with Black Noir, but even with Billy. Like, that was so cool. Mm -hmm. And I love how, like, as we're going through it, later on you hear his mind story. He's like, he's, he's, he's pretty fucked up. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to wake that guy up. He's pure evil. <laughs> yeah. 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 But but all together, it just, like, it worked. Like, everybody was dealing with their own, like, inner demons. And they were trying to, like, figure out what they really wanted to do with their lives. And, you know, e even even after what Billy went through and everything, like, everything that we saw... We see at the very end, it's like, we don't know if he's actually going to just keep doing what he wants to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, for me, I think this episode could be my favorite episode of the entire show, like all seasons. Uh, I just really, really loved it. I just felt that it was just hitting from every angle. I loved getting to kind of see soldier boy out on the mission and he's all like stoned and paranoid and butchers keeping him caught <laughs> keeping him hide because he's like he's got ptsd like this guy like this is why he's going nuclear and all so i thought that was all fascinating it was fantastic to see jensen i love him um the black noir stuff was incredible um like i was howling laughing at the uh the the, the cartoon character who was like stu uh, stuttering and stuff like he's like B -b massacre and all like i was <laughs> i was like, rolling around laughing i loved it, it was so good and it's like, yeah, it makes sense. This guy would be seeing mad shit like that because, like, mm -hmm. Homelander, like, made an absolute mess of his head, like, you know? So, and if I'm remembering correctly, weren't we kind of led to believe, I don't know if it was somebody else telling the story, but we saw it from a diff different perspective earlier in the season and it looked like there was an explosion in the camp and that's what caused his, like, um, damage to his face. But then it, mm -hmm. we, we now find out, or maybe this isn't true either, like who knows, but we might just be seeing it from different perspectives. But now the story's changed and it's uh, it's Soldier Boy who's basically like nearly beating him to death. Like so mm -hmm. it just that just makes him such such a more interesting character and it kind of makes more sense as to now why he would dig his tracker out and go on the mm -hmm. run. So yeah, it was just it was crazy. Homelander's story just continuously gets better and better. Um and again, I haven't read any of the source material for the boys. So when I heard that the the uh, cliffhanger at the end of the episode, finding out that Soldier Boy was Homelander's father, I, my jaw was on the floor, boys. I could not believe it. <laughs> I was like, I did yeah. not know it was coming at all. And the second he started saying it, I just said to myself, oh my God, it makes so much sense. <laughs> like, I was like, it's yeah. so <laughs> obvious. And I'm like, yes, it makes so much sense. So now it's like, the, the, the question is like, what's Soldier Boy going to do? Is he actually evil? I think he is evil enough to potentially kill his own son, but, like, are they going to team up? Are they going to have a big, like, massive, like, father versus son, like, showdown? Who knows, bro? Like, I uh, just, I'm so excited to see where it goes. Really hope that Soldier Boy moves on to the next season. I'd, I'd hate for him to get, like, yeah. taken out at the end, like, in the next episode. Like, next week is the finale. I would really hate for his story to end. I really hope it moves on. Um... I don't know what's going to happen with Maeve. I presume she's going to get broken out or she's going to escape or something like that. She has to get out. But yeah, like there's just, there's so much going on. Like, and then there's mm -hmm. the story with uh, Kimiko taking the V again and she's got her oh. powers back. Is she going to have the same powers? Is she going to have different powers when she, when she kind of regenerates or whatever? Who knows? I, I, I don't know how the V works. Does it give a person the same powers each time? 
And then as well, we've got the temp V, which is like cooking people's brains. Like I knew, like it was pretty obvious something bad was going to happen with the temp V. I thought maybe they might develop the powers full time. I was thinking like, you know, take five or take 10 shots and then you're a full soup forever. And I was thinking that'd be actually a really cool story because it would be Butcher having to go to those extremes to take that temp V. And then it turns out that he turns into the thing that he's trying to destroy. I think that'd just be really poetic. So I'm curious to see where that story goes as well. But like, yeah, like, I feel like there's so much to tie up. There's no way yeah. that they can't tie it all up in one episode. There's so much going. It has to like bleed into the next season. It really does. Right. I, I, and, like, I can't believe We're still was. sitting here like, where's the CEO? Like we haven't seen Stan Egger in like four episodes now, right? And he's such a pivotal part of the show that him just being off in the distance, like not doing anything seems crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it, it seems crazy that we haven't seen him. It seems crazy that uh, he wouldn't have a plan going on. Uh, so I I really want to see what happens with him, and then on the same token for like a the the congresswoman and her kid, like that kid took V, and like we still haven't seen anything from that storyline develop. Mm. Like you're right, there's so many loose ends, there's so much more to go in the show. Um, like a season five has got to happen, has to yeah, uh, has to happen. Mm-hmm. And I I really do hope that just Jason Eccles comes back for it because you know this one we really did get to see him i feel kind of settle into the character more like really get like slower moments with him uh as a character and you can totally see how he was almost captain america yeah. i mean he sounds like <laughs> chris evans playing captain america right like he has that tenor and that like leadership tone uh that i wish he was in the MCU cuz he probably would do the mcu forever he's a phenom- well, he's never- a phenomenal actor bro phenomenal yeah, yeah. so well, under- you never know he might show up in the he might end up showing up at one point. Yeah, at one point, because they see how much of a good job he does and how much they could have realized, like, this could have been our Captain America. Mm-hmm. So they got to put him into something else. They could put they could put him anywhere. I think Cyclops. he's, you know, I, I think he's going live action to DC, if I'm being if I'm being honest. He does a lot. Oh, of, don't waste him like that. I know, but he does. He does, <laughs> he does a lot of work with DC as it is now. He's doing animated stuff. He's like voicing Batman right now. You know, he is the main man himself. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he went into live action because apparently he's working on a DC project himself at the moment. Some people are speculating he might be Green Arrow or something. Some people are speculating mm. that he could be a live action Batman or a live action Jason Todd or, you know, just so many things out there that, that he could be doing. But apparently he is trying to bring some passion project of his to light for DC and obviously everybody speculating and saying passion project. I know he loves Jason Todd. He loves the Batman universe. So it's like, is it going to be someone within the bat family? Like, which would be pretty sure. cool. But yeah, I, I think, think you're, you're I think you're right. I'd love to, I, I think he's such a phenomenal actor. Get him into the MCU. You're, you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, even if he doesn't get into the Batman area of the DC universe, I think he would be a fantastic Hal Jordan. Like, I mm. think he would work that out really well. I think he's got the, the grit to show that he has like such strong willpower and that he can fight fear and like i think that would work completely well yeah um mm-hmm. but in ter- but in terms of like the marvel i would love to see him as doom i think he could show off as a great doom but doom has the mask on all the time yeah. we just need a great voice on doom you know what i mean like doom is like a darth vader character we're like right. i just want a voice actor like you know james earl jones plays darth vader like it's not the dude the dude who's in the suit isn't darth vader yeah. it's james earl mm-hmm. jones and like that's what we need is like just a great voice actor. I wish he does have a great voice, but I feel like Doctor Doom is a little short because even though the villains, you know, even though they do get some screen time, it's not like Thanos was always in exactly. the movies. You know what I mean? Exactly. Right. I, w- I would like someone, you know, like I joked around Cyclops real quick. I would love him in a Cyclops role where, like, you know, needs that leadership uh, presence, uh, great voice. You know, mm-hmm. just he'd be perfect in that role. So yeah, I think so. Definitely. And I, I really like Killian Murphy for Doom. I think he'd be a really mm-hmm. cool Doom, and like they could maybe do like an origin of Doom, and then take him a little while to get into the mask. And does isn't there a storyline in the comics where like he like fuses the mask to his head so that he can't take it off? If I'm mm-hmm. if I'm um, not mistaken, yeah. In a sense, it's like it's done via magic. Like uh, yeah. these cultists help him like get this magic uh, uh, to like fuse onto his face, yeah, and then he never has to take it off. I think mm-hmm. that like if the if the MCU were clever about it, they'd bring in like a top tier actor to play him get used to the character without the mask for a while and then fuse it on and then people know who's in there you know rather than just having yeah. a having a good voice actor i think it would mm. hit, hit a lot harder if it was sure. an actor that we saw face to face for like three or four movies and then bang then it happens like um, and sure. to revert back to the boys 
Hey, so anyway, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just to revert back to the boys real quick. So yeah, I heard Eric Kripke, who's the developer of the show, the showrunner, he was basically saying that he's looking to get Jeffrey Dean Morgan in the next season. And he'd love to have like Jared Pelilecki and you know? all. So it's kind of like a supernatural reunion. So that, yeah. when I hear stuff like that, that kind of cements for me that Jensen's going to hang on. He's definitely going to be in the next season. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I really think so. And I like, if, if we could get Jeffrey Dean Morgan in there, like obviously he was like so good in Watchmen and stuff like that as well. Like, you know, he was the comedian in Watchmen. So like, you know, the guys knows superhero stuff. He can do it. Um, and I just think I'd love to see just the two of them reunited on, on TV. It would just be phenomenal. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the deep scene real quick? Oh my god. My gr- what is going on, man? My girlfriend looked at me with just pure disgust in her face when that scene happened. Like just yeah. like what the hell's happened? I know like yeah, the deep is just crazy. And like I, I think I heard an interview with him before the show premiered and he was like <laughs> he was like genuinely saying like he was like, I fear for my future for the like the future of my career after this show because he's like i don't know how i'm gonna get work after this <laughs> oh it's just i can see how it's, yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's having the squid just like you know fully go down and you like that it's just uh, it's very weird. it's very very disturbing stuff i love yeah. when i love when uh, the girlfriend is like how long have you been fucking her <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so funny uh, the second he said I want to introduce a third into the relationship, I just knew that's where it was going. And, like she's just like, yep. "Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah." And then he just <laughs> grabs him out of the tank, which is like right beside the bed, by the way, which is also freaky. Oh, bro, that's just. Well, how about oh. how about that? Uh, how about Kimiko and you know Marvin and and all the other cast like Frenchie and whatnot? Like, what do you guys think of of all them? This the scenes with Kimiko, man. That actress is like doing such an astounding job as that character for not being able to voice what she's feeling. And it's all just not based on her emotions and her looks and stuff. I am mm-hmm. completely engrossed with her character. My heart breaks for that character all the time. Uh, I love that she got her powers back because she's one. Of, I think she's one of the funnest characters in the show when she's like going off on people. Uh, I love that man. Like her and, and starlight were great together. Uh, yeah. That being like her first drink was a, just such a hilarious little plot point. And it's like Kirkland. Which, if for people who don't know, especially like Fento, because he's not stateside, that's like Costco brand. It's like the big box store. That's <laughs> yeah, like the yeah. cheapest, most, but like it's not even a real distillery. It's not real alcohol. It's like the worst, <laughs> bro. It's disgusting. Yeah. So I, it was really funny. That's it. Well, my girlfriend, she she's huge about like Costco and Kirkland. You know, I I always like to get brand name like batteries and whatnot. She's like, no, we got this like. 40 pack of Kirkland. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's absolutely hilarious. And speaking of Starlight, actually, her best moment in the episode had to be when she was secretly recording Homelander. I yes. was like, bro. I was like, couldn't believe it. I screamed. I was like, yes. I was like, oh my God, they got him. And I love with like Homelander as the, as the elevator doors are closing. You know, you're not supposed to record us when we're doing lines. <laughs> 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 oh, dude. It was so funny. So fucking good. Like, I just really think like Homelander is going to be done in the public eye. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's over. Like, you know, oh man, I'm just, I'm so excited for the next episode. I just don't know what we're going to see, where it's going to go and what like transfers into the next season. Like, it's just, oh. It's incredible. Yeah. Have, have you guys got any I, predictions before we wrap up this video for the next episode? Um, I would like that the uh, <laughs> I would like that the, uh, the the childbirth situation that uh, Soldier Boy is telling Homelander is fake, and I would really like his mom to be Stormfront. Um, I was really hoping that's where it was going. That the Soldier Boy and Stormfront had a kid, and it was Homelander, and so now Homelander oh is God. like <laughs> yeah. with his mom the whole time. I yeah, think yeah, that would yeah. just be nice. Oh, that's so fucked. That's crazy. That's so fucked up, man. <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what. That's exactly what's gonna happen, isn't it? <laughs> oh man, uh, only I'm I'm terrified of any of like our favorites to get killed at any point. And I know that like it can happen at any at any moment. But I love Marvin so much. I think mm-hmm. he's a fantastic character. I love his his struggles, and I think he's like the most real person out of anyone that's there because he's struggling so hard to keep himself together while also trying to deal with his his inner demons and i love his just like yeah his teachers are so good they're so good dude every episode i'm like oh yes yeah when he knocked out when he knocked out the stepdad i was just just like hell yeah bro i was loving it (laughs) it's great i was like he that that fucker deserved it he's an 
idiot. <laughs> she's, it's crazy, man. Just bringing bringing her to a Homelander rally when when they know that like soups can just do anything at any point. But That's what I thought nice. what I thought was so beautiful about that is just that this guy. And again, I I don't mean any disrespect to the Americans, but like that is how I would picture some of these Americans going on, like just believing everything that they fucking hear. And it's like, oh, what What do you mean? It's like Star- uh, Starlight's clearly the villain. And I was like, what are you talking about? You're so brainwashed. It's not even funny. Right. Like that, that's, it's just a perfect like depiction of what the world is like. Like every, like the vast majority of people just believe whatever CNN tells them, like, you know? So I, I just take, mm-hmm. again, it's just them poking fun at the real world. And it's just chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. Really is. Yeah. Um, also, I I want to see the boys work with uh, Jagger or whatever, uh, or Stan Egger. I really want them to, because uh, mm. you know he's got to be plotting to bring Homelander down, and they're developing that vapor thing uh, to stop Soldier Boy and probably Homelander. Yeah. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, Frenchie kind of discovered what it was, and that's gonna come back. And I think they're gonna try and like knock him out. And I think they're gonna need uh, our boy to do it. Yeah. Hell yeah, guys. If you're uh, if you're new, make sure you hit like on the video. Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think of the episode. Um, tell us what your expectations for your theories for next week are. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.